Do you want to know the fastest way to burn money on a cattle farm without even realizing it? It is not disease. It is not the market price crashing. It is something you look at every single day. It is right there in the water trough. You might think you are doing everything right. You buy the best genetics. You formulate the perfect ration with high protein and energy. You have the best veterinary protocols but your animals are still not converting feed into weight as efficiently as they should. You are seeing feed bills go up and weight gains stagnate. And the worst part is, almost nobody talks about this hidden thief that is stealing pounds from your cattle and dollars from your pocket. What if I told you that the temperature of the water your cattle drink is the single most overlooked factor in feed conversion efficiency? What if I told you that by ignoring this one detail, you are forcing your cows to use their expensive feed just to warm up their bodies instead of growing meat? This is not a theory. This is biology. This is thermodynamics. And if you stay with me, I am going to reveal the water temperature trick that the most profitable feedlots use to maximize their gains. In a moment, I will explain exactly how cold water destroys rumen function and how you can fix it with a simple adjustment. But first, you need to understand the magnitude of the mistake you might be making right now. You see, cattle are not just machines that you pour grass into and get beef out of. They are biological systems. Specifically, they are fermentation tanks on legs. The engine of a cow is the rumen. It is a massive vat filled with billions of bacteria and protozoa that break down tough plant fibers and turn them into energy. Now, think about fermentation. Think about making bread or brewing beer. What is the one thing that kills fermentation instantly? A sudden drop in temperature. When a cow walks up to a trough in the middle of winter and drinks 10 or 15 gallons of near freezing water, something catastrophic happens inside that rumen. Imagine you are sitting in a warm room, perfectly comfortable, and suddenly someone dumps a bucket of ice water over your head. Your body goes into shock. You start shivering. Your metabolism goes into overdrive just to keep you alive. This is exactly what happens to the microscopic bugs inside the cow's stomach. The ideal temperature for rumen fermentation is roughly 101 to 102 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the sweet spot where the bacteria are happy, active, and breaking down feed efficiently. But when that animal drinks water that is 35 or 40 degrees Fahrenheit, it acts like a thermal bomb. The internal temperature of the rumen drops. The bacteria stop working. They go dormant or they die. Digestion slows down to a crawl. And here is the kicker. The cow now has to spend its own body energy to warm that water up. It has to take the calories from the corn, the soy, and the hay you paid a fortune for, and instead of using those calories to build muscle or lay down fat, it burns them just to act like a water heater. You are literally paying for feed to heat up water. Does that sound like a good business model to you? Of course not, but it gets worse. When digestion slows down, the feed passage rate slows down. That means the cow feels full for longer. And if the cow feels full, she does not eat. Dry matter intake drops. And as every rancher knows, if they are not eating, they are not gaining. You create a vicious cycle where the animal eats less and burns more energy, all because the water was too cold. Have you noticed your cattle bunching up in the winter, looking rough with their hair coat standing up? Have you noticed that despite increasing the ration, they just maintain weight rather than gaining? This is likely the culprit. We focus so much on the solid food that we forget that water is the nutrient consumed in the largest quantity. A finishing steer might drink 15 to 20 gallons a day. If that water is freezing, that is a massive thermal load on the animal. Have you noticed your cattle bunching up in the winter, looking rough with their hair coat standing up? Have you noticed that despite increasing the ration, they just maintain weight rather than gaining? This is likely the culprit. We focus so much on the solid food that we forget that water is the nutrient consumed in the largest quantity. A finishing steer might drink 15 to 20 gallons a day. If that water is freezing, that is a massive thermal load on the animal. 
But wait, because there is another psychological layer to this. Cattle are smart. They are creatures of comfort. If the water is painfully cold, they will drink less of it. They will sip just enough to survive, but not enough to thrive. Water is the vehicle for all metabolic processes. It transports nutrients. It flushes out toxins. If water intake drops by 10%, feed intake can drop by 15 or 20%. You cannot separate the two. You cannot have high feed conversion with low water intake. It is physically impossible. So, what is the magic number? What is the trick? Studies have shown that warming drinking water to just 45 or 50 degrees Fahrenheit during the coldest months can increase weight gain significantly compared to cattle drinking ice cold water. We are not talking about making it hot tea. We are just talking about taking the bite out of it. We are talking about closing that gap between the water temperature and the body temperature so the shock is minimized. I know what you are thinking. You are thinking that cows are tough animals. You are thinking that bison lived on the plains for thousands of years eating snow. And you are right, they survived. But you are not in the business of survival. You are in the business of production. Survival pays zero dollars. Optimization pays the bills. A bison eating snow is just trying to make it to spring. A steer in your feedlot needs to be putting on three or four pounds a day. Do not confuse biology with business. If you treat your cattle like wild animals, you will get wild animal performance, which is slow, inefficient, and lean. If you want high performance, you have to engineer the environment. Before I dive into the practical solutions and the equipment you need to stop this energy leak, I want to ask you something. Are you enjoying this deep dive into the science of making money with livestock? If you are finding value in this, if you are realizing that maybe there are things you have missed, I invite you to join our community. We are building the strongest network of informed producers right here. Go ahead and click that subscribe button for Biggest Bulls and Cow. We do not deal in fluff. We deal in facts that improve your bottom line. Join us and let us turn your operation into a machine of efficiency. Now, let us get back to the strategy. How do you fix this? How do you apply the water temperature trick without breaking the bank on electricity? First, you need to assess your current situation. Go out to your troughs tomorrow morning. Do not just look at them. Put your hand in the water. If you have to break a layer of ice, you are already losing money. If your hand aches from the cold within 10 seconds, your cows are suffering a metabolic penalty. The most basic step is preventing freezing. But remember, the trick is not just liquid water, it is tempered water. There are several ways to achieve this. The most common is the electric tank heater. These are simple resistance heaters that sit at the bottom of the tank. However, a common mistake is buying one that is underpowered for the size of your tank. If you have a 500-gallon tank and a small heater, it will run constantly and barely make a dent. You need to match the wattage to the volume of water and the severity of your climate. But here's a pro tip that many people overlook. Insulation. You insulate your house, right? Why do we leave stock tanks completely exposed to the wind and freezing ground? By simply insulating the sides of your water trough or partially burying it in the ground to use the Earth's geothermal heat, you can drastically reduce the energy needed to keep that water warm. An insulated tank holds the heat generated by the incoming groundwater, which is usually around 50 degrees coming out of the well. If you can keep it at 50 degrees, you have won the game. You do not need to heat it to 80. 50 is fine. 50 is fluid. 50 does not shock the rumen. Another technique for larger operations is a continuous flow system or a circulation system. Moving water does not freeze as easily, and if you are pumping fresh groundwater constantly, you are bringing that 50 degree heat into the tank continuously. The overflow can be drained away or recycled. This is often cheaper than electric heaters if you have the water rights and the drainage setup. Let me tell you about a common error that drives me crazy. It is the break the ice method. I see farmers who go out every morning with an ax or a sledgehammer, smash the ice on the trough, remove the chunks, and walk away thinking they have done their job. 
they pat themselves on the back for being hard workers. But working hard is not the same as working smart. Yes, the cows can drink, but that water is 32 degrees. It contains ice shards. The cows will drink the bare minimum. Their teeth hurt, their stomachs cramp, and then they go lay down and burn feed to stay warm. You saved money on a heater, but you lost money on the feed bill. It is a false economy. Furthermore, let us talk about the biology of the bacteria again. There are fiber digesters and starch digesters. The fiber digesters are particularly sensitive to environmental shifts. If you are feeding a high roughage diet, relying on hay or silage, you are 100% dependent on those bacteria. If you knock them out with cold water twice a day, you are reducing the digestibility of that hay. You might see undigested fiber in the manure. That is money on the ground. That is feed that passed through the animal without being absorbed. When you see that, you should be angry. That is waste. And in this business, waste is the enemy. Now, consider the social engineering aspect of your herd. Cows are herd animals. They follow the leader. If the dominant cow goes to the trough, takes a sip, and backs away because it is too cold, the others will follow suit. They will stand around the trough, thirsty but unwilling to drink deep. This leads to dehydration. Dehydration leads to lower blood volume, poor circulation, and a suppressed immune system. Now you are opening the door to respiratory diseases. Pneumonia loves a stressed, dehydrated calf in the winter. So, the water temperature trick is not just about feed conversion, it is about health insurance. I want you to imagine two scenarios. Scenario A, a steer walks up to a frozen tank. The farmer breaks the ice, the steer drinks three gallons of freezing slush. Its core temperature drops, it stops eating for two hours while it shivers. It burns two pounds of corn worth of energy just to recover. Scenario B. A steer walks up to an insulated, heated tank. The water is steam rising gently in the cold air. It is 48 degrees. The steer drinks five gallons easily. It feels good. Its core temperature remains stable. It walks immediately to the feed bunk and consumes a massive meal of forage and grain. The rumen bugs are warm and active, exploding the feed into energy. That steer gains 3.5 pounds that day. Which scenario do you want? The choice seems obvious, yet thousands of producers choose scenario A every winter because they do not want to deal with the hassle of heaters or insulation. They are tripping over dollars to pick up pennies. Here is another secret. Water intake drives dry matter intake but it also drives the effectiveness of minerals. If you are providing expensive mineral supplements, they need water to be absorbed and utilized. Dehydration renders your mineral program less effective. Everything is connected. You cannot isolate one part of the system. Let us address the small producers versus the big producers. If you have five cows, do you need a $1,000 automatic waterer? Maybe not, but you can use a floating de-icer. You can build a wooden box around your trough and fill it with straw or foam for insulation. The principle is the same. If you have 5,000 head, the return on investment for a sophisticated frost-free water system is massive. It pays for itself in one season through improved average daily gain. I want you to imagine two scenarios. Scenario A. A steer walks up to a frozen tank. The farmer breaks the ice. The steer drinks three gallons of freezing slush. Its core temperature drops. It stops eating for two hours while it shivers. It burns two pounds of corn worth of energy just to recover. Scenario B, a steer walks up to an insulated, heated tank. The water is steam rising gently in the cold air. It is 48 degrees. The steer drinks five gallons easily. It feels good. Its core temperature remains stable. It walks immediately to the feed bunk and consumes a massive meal of forage and grain. The rumen bugs are warm and active, exploding the feed into energy. That steer gains 3.5 pounds that day. Which scenario do you want? The choice seems obvious, yet thousands of producers choose scenario A every winter because they do not want to deal with the hassle of heaters or insulation. They are tripping over dollars to pick up pennies. Here is another secret. Water intake drives dry matter intake, but it also drives the effectiveness of minerals. 
If you are providing expensive mineral supplements, they need water to be absorbed and utilized. Dehydration renders your mineral program less effective. Everything is connected. You cannot isolate one part of the system. Let us address the small producers versus the big producers. If you have five cows, do you need a $1,000 automatic waterer? Maybe not. But you can use a floating de-icer. You can build a wooden box around your trough and fill it with straw or foam for insulation. The principle is the same. If you have 5,000 head, the return on investment for a sophisticated frost-free water system is massive. It pays for itself in one season through improved average daily gain. I want you to think about your setup right now. Visualize your water troughs. Are they helping you or hurting you? Tomorrow morning, when you step out into the cold air, I want you to remember this video. I want you to look at that water and see it for what it is, fuel for your engine. Do not put water in the gas tank. We are here to help you grow. We are here to make sure that every pound of feed you buy turns into profit. But we can only do that if we stay connected. This is a journey of continuous learning. Agriculture changes, technology changes, but the biology of the cow remains the same. Mastering that biology is your key to success. If you found this information useful, if you learned something new about the relationship between water temperature and weight gain, please do not keep it to yourself. Share this with a friend, a neighbor, or a young farmer just starting out. We need to lift each other up in this industry. And most importantly, if you have not done so already, join the tribe. Click that subscribe button for Biggest Bulls and Cow. Leave a comment below telling us where you are from and how you manage water in the winter. Do you use heaters? Do you have a different trick? Let us learn from each other in the comment section. We are building a legacy of smarter, more profitable cattle farming. Be a part of it. Thank you for watching, thank you for caring about your livestock, and remember, happy cows, warm water, heavy weights. Subscribe now and I will see you in the next video where we will uncover another secret to massive gains. Keep your boots muddy and your mind open. Until next time.